Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper, Trader, Guide, Scout, and Interpreter, and just a country cook, Steve Hall, here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with Pretty Miss Sheila, who's in Alabama with her mom. There's those two girls right there on the screen. Aren't they beautiful? They're having a lot of fun down there, and Sheila will be home tomorrow, so that means i got to wash the dishes and take the garbage out before she gets here. You know how that goes. Today I'm going to make a recipe that I kind of swiped it a little bit. I love hunting and fishing. And I love watching hunting and fishing shows. Now, I'm from Minnesota, so of course, I watch Al Linder, I watch Babe Winkleman, I watch all the guys from up there. And I'm proud to say that my little buddy Shotgun Red is in the Brainerd Hall of Fame along with Al Linder, Babe Winkleman, Teacher of the Year, Guy Dowd, a whole bunch of people up there that are in there. Uh, the list is too long to mention, but they're all great folks. So it's an honor to be part of that organization. Now, once I moved from Minnesota to Tennessee, Started watching a lot of hunting and fishing shows that were filmed down here in the south because I was really interested in quail hunting, crappie fishing, catfish, different techniques that they did in the south. And one of the shows that really caught my eye was a show called O'Neill Outside with Travis Johnson. Used to be just called O'Neill Outside and the host is O'Neill Williams and I think he's kind of bringing his grandson in there to kind of take over the reins in the future if you know what I mean. So now it's called O'Neill Outside with Travis Johnson. But he also has a cooking segment on there and I gotta tell you, I stole this recipe because I seen it on there. It was stuffed summer tomatoes. Man, big juicy tomatoes like this. And by the way, I'm gonna take you over and show you where I got these because they're a friend of Sheila's. She visits with them all the time. They've been in business for years. Let's take a trip over here and look at this little roadside produce stand in Mount Juliet. They are roadside produce here in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. They got a lot of goodies on the back shelf. I like checking out all the jams and jellies. They got all kinds of melons here. Looking really good, but what I'm interested in is tomatoes. And they got some big honking red tomatoes. I'm gonna pick some out and take them back to the house for the recipe. So that's where I got these tomatoes at that roadside stand. Now, Kroger's has got great produce, but I wanted to get some homegrown tomatoes from a little stand because they get a lot of their stuff from local growers. But I'm watching this recipe on this O'Neill Outside show and they're doing this and one of the ingredients is sausage and it's Swaggerty sausage. In fact, I think it's their recipe and he produced it for them. But I went out and bought some because I, before I do anything on any show that I have here on Cooking with Shotgun Red, I want to taste it. It's got no MSG, it's all natural, preservative free sausage and the seasonings are perfect. You know me, I'm a Minnesota boy and I know all about making sausage and what it should taste like. This stuff is killer and I want to use this in this recipe for two reasons. One, because it's a great product and tastes good and two, because they sponsor an outdoor hunting and fishing show. Good for you, Swaggerty's. I went right to the store, there's a whole bunch of choices and I picked this off the shelf because they sponsor that. And I like the fact that they sponsor a hunting and fishing show that really promotes hunting with your kids, your grandkids in that case. And there's an old saying amongst us sportsmen, if you take your kids hunting, you won't have to go downtown and hunt for your kids. Good for you, Swaggerty's, great product. This is the second pound of sausage. I already fried one up over the last couple of days, tried it in some different recipes. Oh, it's delicious, but we're gonna put this in here. Now Sheila's not here so I don't have the frying pans all set up. So I'm going to cut this in half and use a half a pound of this. I'm going to fry it in the kitchen right now. Then I'll bring it back. Then I'm also going to put in some rice and I got a little, this is instant rice, comes in these little tubs. 60 seconds in the microwave and it goes right into the recipe. So let me do that and I'll come back and I'll show you what we're going to do from there. See you in a second. Alright, I'm back from the microwave with my little minute rice. You get two tubs in a little container here. Took 60 seconds to make it, but before I dump it on top of this sausage, I want to show you something. I did not drain that at all on a paper towel. There's no water in the frying pan, there's no grease in the frying pan. It fries up just delicious. And I want to show you something else. Look at the inside of that sausage. I'm just going to expose their product to the world. You have no idea how many times I go down and buy sausage, cut it in half to fry up a half a package or whatever, and it's just white with fat inside. Look at how much red meat there is. Yes, it has the perfect amount of marbling because you want fat for flavor and the seasonings. Ugh. I just wanted to show you what it looks like inside. They have a killer product. 
Good for you, Swaggerty. So anyway, we're going to put our one little packet of rice into our fried sausage here. Then we're going to put in a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. Now, I, I got this about 60-40. 60% 60 60 pepper, 40% salt. And I'm just going to give it a little dusting. Maybe a total of a half a teaspoon for everything. I already got it pre-mixed. Then I'm going to put in a teaspoon of garlic powder. Now this is O'Neill's recipe off of there. We're going to put in a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. And I got to tell you, I ran to the store and I just kind of grabbed it without looking. And it's mozzarella and Parmesan blend. And I thought, well, you know, we kind of got some tomatoes and some sausage and you know, Parmesan cheese going here. Kind of got a little pizza flavor. Wouldn't hurt to throw in a little bit of that mozzarella as well. So I'm going to kind of mix this up. Okay, I got that mixed up good. Now we're going to put in two tablespoons of parsley. Boy, that smells just wonderful. Smells good in the kitchen, too. I tell you that. I just love sausage. I'm sorry. It's a good product. I'm a Minnesota boy, and we eat a lot of sausage up there. I'm not sure if it's available in Minnesota, but it is available at Kroger's in Tennessee because that's where I got it. So now we got our cheese in there and all our goodies. We're going to let this kind of sit together because i got to show you something else. Let me move a tomato over here. Now, like I said, I stole this recipe off of their show. And plus, you can always look it up on O'NeillOutside.com. But I got to tell you, he did four tomatoes. And when he got done, he had enough mixture over here that it looked like he could maybe do five or six. And six fit in here perfect. Now, I don't know if it'll fill it all out. But one thing I do remember is he only used the insides of four of these tomatoes to go in his mixture. In other words, we're going to take what we hollow out of the tomato. And you can see that these are all hollowed out nice. I did them earlier, and then I kept the lid to go on top like he does. So I only kept four, the meat out of four tomatoes instead of six. Because I don't want to change this recipe over here. I just don't want to fill four of them and got some left and think, man, I could do that. Let me show you what I did here. First of all, we're going to core out the top. Now cut away from yourself. Don't start this cutting at yourself here. Kind of cut away from your fingers. We're just going to cut that top part out there. Then, we're going to go back to where, where it starts to come up and starts to curve forward. We're going to come back about three quarters of an inch and cut the top off. And that'll be perfect. Now again, don't cut towards yourself. Cut away from yourself. You know I kind of harp on that because I am just not a fan of those sharp ends of those knives. Once I get it cut around, then I get underneath here, kind of cut at an angle underneath. only takes a couple cuts and it pops right out. Now I'm not going to use this part because I've already saved four of them, but I just wanted to show you what I did here. Let me get my spoon back. And then I'm going to hollow out the inside of this, and I'll be right back with you because i got to get a bowl. All right, I got my bowl. That didn't take long. And what you want to do is you want to hollow out the inside of these. I cut it out first, the main part, and then I take a spoon and just kind of yeah, that's looking nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, what I did is I drained, I chopped this up, and I chopped this up, and I drained it, and that's what I've got right here. Now, you're going to keep the top, because you want to put the top back on once it's time to pop it in the oven. So, let's do this here. Now that we got those all hollowed out, like I said, and ready to go, I need to put the tomato portion in here. And remember, this is only from four tomatoes because that's his recipe. Yeah, see, that's just the right amount. Looky there. Isn't that beautiful, Sheila? If you were running the camera, I know. If it ain't in focus or if I ain't got it centered or if it's crooked or something, I know I ain't supposed to say ain't, but that looks just beautiful. It's got the rice in there, it's got that cheese in there, all the spices. And now it's time to load these babies up. Let me put all the lids out here. I 
put that other one over here, yeah. So let's go ahead and stuff these babies. Pack her down in there. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to get a plate. See you in a second. All right, there we go. Because I want to mound this up, and I know some's going to fall off to the side, I don't want it to fall in my baking dish. So I'm going to I'm going to prepare these on this plate, then move them to the baking dish. And this is about what I want to do right here. Then he puts a little more cheese on top. We're going to kind of mash it to make it stick into the product. Kind of shake the excess. Now see, now that sits in there, no spilling. Time for the next one. Get this a little closer. Maybe I'll get this. I know Sheila's saying, get that on camera. Make sure it's in the center of the camera. She's going to be home tomorrow. Man, i got to wash dishes. i got to vacuum. i got to haul the garbage out. All that stuff before she gets here. What I do, believe it or not, is I have her call me when she's about an hour and a half away. Then I jump up and do all that stuff I was telling you about there. Beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Looky there. All right. Let's see. This might not fill all six of them. But we're going to see here. I might kind of level it off there just so I can get her done. Put a little more cheese on there. All right. Maybe that's why he only did four tomatoes. See? I knew it. I knew I should have paid attention to his recipe. Folks, only use four tomatoes because this recipe only fills up four of them. Oh, I hate it when those hunting fishing guys are right. Looky there. See, that's exactly four of them. Somebody, and I think he was preparing a, that's a Swaggerty's recipe there. I think he was preparing their recipe. And somebody there was smart enough to know that a half a pound of that sausage, along with all these other goodies, equals four tomatoes. So, these two guys are going to have to get chopped up and put in a salad. This guy's going over here, along with this. All right. Hope this is looking good. Now we're going to put this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes or until the cheese starts to melt. we got a little more room for some cheese over here until it starts to melt. And we'll see you when we're back from the oven. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I almost forgot. you got to take the little lids and put them on top. like this. I got a problem. Which one came off the top of which tomato? You know, if you buy nice uniform tomatoes like I did, it doesn't matter. All right, I can't wait to show you this. 20 minutes in the oven, 350 degrees, and about 15 minutes in, I was looking at these little tops of these tomatoes, and I thought them little holes are just begging for something. Aha, cheese. So, about halfway through the cooking process, there is cheese in between the layers where you put the cap on, but the little hole looks so empty. So I put cheese in there and it melted. It looks terrific. Let me plate this up. What do you think, Sheila? How'd I do? And I got some fresh basil from out in the back porch. We got a little herb garden out there. I'm just going to take a pair of scissors here. Cut a little fresh basil on top. This whole combination has got a pizza style flavor kind of going to it. And I'll tell you something else. That Swaggerty sausage that I use, that recipe calls for four tomatoes. And it works perfect for four big tomatoes. I did cut the other ones up. I'm not lying. I'll save those for a salad for Sheila when she gets home. But I got thinking, 
why not fry up the entire pound of Swaggerty sausage, put in two little tubs of rice, double all the other ingredients, and make eight tomatoes. Or you could probably get by with six little ones. I'm trying to, I'm trying to talk myself out of that. The recipe calls for four tomatoes. Use four big tomatoes for that recipe. They know what they're talking about, and they know what they're talking about when it comes to flavor, too. Cutting up a little fresh basil on top, and I'm hoping this is looking good to Sheila, because I'm going to tag her. You know what? This is kind of amazing right now. At the posting of this video, we're at 65,000 subscribers, and it's all due to you people that subscribe, that watch it, share it with your friends, all the nice comments you send us at shotgunredcompany at yahoo.com. I got to do a little house cleaning, or Sheila said I left something on there. What do you think, Sheila? Didn't I do good? Didn't that look wonderful? Now, if she was here, she'd take a snapshot of this, but I'm just going to have to do a screenshot and put it on there. What I was talking about is we're at 65,000 subscribers. Now, just a few days after we post this, it'll be higher than that because we're gaining about 7,000 subscribers every 28 days, and it's because... I really truly think it's because we disabled our comments so there's no nasty comments underneath any of our recipes where people want to argue back and forth and so you can show the recipes to your kids they can go online you can share it with your friends and family and you never have to worry about anything being on there off color because man those kids are so important and they're gonna be our next chefs so we want to pull them in with recipes like this looky here all right I let this cool for a little bit before I run off, I do want to cut it open down the side here and show you how delicious that looks. Look at that. All the juice from the tomatoes, the cheese, parsley inside, got the little greens on top, and that swaggerty sausage is so incredible. Time for me to take a little taste test here. I want to kind of get into the tomato just a little bit. Where that sausage and cheese is. Hold on. Wow. Folks. That is drop the fork fantastic. You got to make these. It's summertime. I'll bet you got some tomatoes in your garden right now. Or you know where there's a little produce stand. Or go over to Kroger's. They got great tomatoes over there as well. Pick some up and make yourself some stuffed summer tomatoes. What do you think, Sheila? Isn't that beautiful or what? Man, I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. You know there's some tomatoes right out there in the garden or just up the street. Cut that top out, slice it, put all the ingredients in, only hollow out four tomatoes and put them inside the mixture because that's exactly what it makes, just like O'Neill knows what he's talking about out there. And then on top of that, once you slice it off and you hollow it out, one thing I did add is put a little bit of cheese in that little hole in the top once you cut it out about halfway through the cooking process. And then put some fresh cut basil on top. If you enjoy our recipes, we hope you subscribe to our channel. Little Shotgun Red's face will pop up over here in a little bit. When it does, please click on it. And when it says subscribe next to that is a bell. If you click on that and hit that notification bell, then it'll send you every recipe we come out with. We really hope you do that. Over here, we'll put up some other recipes. And is this the most delicious stolen recipe from Schwagert's and O'Neill outside with Travis Johnson that I ever made? If it ain't, it ought to be because I swiped it. But I just had to do it because I know there's some people around the world that maybe didn't see that particular episode or don't get it in their area. And I just wanted to share the recipe. You can always check them out at O'NeillOutside.com. Well, all I can say is I know Sheila's sitting down there with her mom having a good dinner tonight, and I'm going to have me some tomatoes for lunch. We'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. And I got to tell you, we just want to thank you from the bottom of our heart for making our channel a huge success. Right now, 65,000 subscribers plus. I hope someday, about a year from now, it'll be 150,000, and I'll be able to look at Sheila and say, Remember when we hit 65,000 subscribers? We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.